The Quinn Dilemma. The 40th anniversary of the Sixth Doctor making his appearance in the rather controversial TV run. And while I do not sing the praises of the era or talk about it at all, and that seems to be the 80s for me, to be honest, Big Finish did open the path to greatness for the Sixth Doctor, beginning of the transition of a less bashful and more softer incarnation of the Sixth Doctor, which is what Colin Baker hoped to take the incarnation. And Big Finish did that starting with the Marion Conspiracy to what will be the beginning of the redemption of the Sixth Doctor. And now 2024 is upon us. The 40th anniversary gives us the Quinn Dilemma, a collection of six Six Doctor stories featuring writers Jacqueline Rayner, who was the writer to have written the story, The Marion Conspiracy, which I was just referencing, that would be the beginning of the redemption arc of the Sixth Doctor. As well, you have Chris Chapman and Robert Valentine as well. Two stories each for the three writers. Note before we get into the review of The Quinn Dilemma, this is a limited edition production of 1,500 copies. So uh, exactly the same as I mentioned in my Storm of the Sea Devils review. So it looks like moving forward that these box sets will be a limited production. And once the production is gone, I presume that that is no more for the physical releases and you can only get it on download or you just have to pick it up on eBay when it's out of print. So let's begin my review of The Quinn Dilemma. The box set begins with The Exaltation, written by Jacqueline Rayner, which serves as the introduction to the box set and rather sets up the plot. The story begins with the Doctor and Mel arriving to Aruna Pal during the year that King Offo steps down as ruler. But the ruler seems to be in a dilemma of some sorts. Which of his five sons is worthy to be his successor? Offo has a plan to put them into a deadly game and the victim, who seems to be poor old Sixie. The title of the story is rather interesting and gives you more of an idea of how it will play out, and that includes the entire box set. Exaltation means a feeling of extreme happiness, so is this a sick twisted game that the ruler and the brothers are doing to put this game together of hunting down the Sixth Doctor, getting sadistic thrills out of it, and a battle of survival for the Sixth Doctor? That's how I pictured when I was going into the story. And yes, you pretty much get that through the entire box set. But what about this first story? It's just basically an introduction. That is just how it serves and how it goes. With the death of the king's wife blamed on the sixth doctor, he doesn't know his oldest born son, which does get resolved in the ending story. So that's the reason of putting this competition together. Mel enjoys the local celebration of the new ruler being announced and the Doctor being hunted by the King's sons. And the one who is successful for hunting down and bringing the Doctor's head will be the next ruler. And they do have their unique characteristics and personality. One is extremely arrogant. One keeps whinging like a damn toddler that you stole his toys out of his pram. One is extremely aggressive and has anger management problems. You get the idea. Some of the sons, like uh, Byron for example, it's just more for a comedic effect. That's the one who's very whingy and labelled a coward. And throughout the entire story, the Quins go to different locations within the Six Doctor's timeline to hunt him down. So they're all competing with each other and the one to bring the Doctor to the King first wins. So that's a basic premise of how the Quinn dilemma works. So it's like the Keys of Marinus, but... The Quins are the one searching for the key, being the Doctor, obviously. So you could say it's the Keys of Marinus formula, almost. I think it was a very good idea to make the Quins all unique and have their own identity. And I do think that Quinn plotline that plays out, it's a little bit shaky to begin with, because, again, like ones like Byron is just used for comedic effect, but then the one in the penultimate story is rather sadistic and messed up and has very bad anger management problems and you can feel the tensions that yeah it's kind of a big deal if uh, this guy captures the doctor so you get that feeling of fear yet the exaltation just sets up everything 
The doctor by the king is called an enemy and alleged for killing his wife. Mel is concerned and worried about the doctor's location. Each son is assigned by location, with Mel deciding the order by picking out the stones. The goal is to capture the head of the doctor. It's just a setup story with some jokes here and there to begin the box set. Zeta is used as a secondary companion and plays quite a significant role in the first and final story. This is just a 7 out of 10, straight up really. A fun introduction and it leaves me wanting more. Let's move on to the next one, Escape the Holy Land by Chris Chapman. Now this is where the order of the stories is a little bit strange because... How the first story, The Exaltation, ends doesn't go into the second story at all. This is a completely different timeline with the Sixth Doctor. As I stated, each of the Quinn brothers have been sent to a different time within the Sixth Doctor's life. So you could say it gets a little bit complicated, but the first story is with Mel. The second is with Perry, a younger Perry. Or is it an older Perry? Now even I'm getting confused. The third story and the fourth story is with Flip and Constance Clark. The fifth story is with Perry. I think that's actually the younger Perry now. Yes, that is the younger Perry. Uh, the second story is the older Perry. And then the sixth story is uh, pretty much all of them. So, yeah, that's how it works, I think. I think I've got the order right. I mean, it's Doctor Who. Of course it's convoluted. Escape the Holy Land is set in 1793 AD with the Holy Land burned down by Viking raiders. But history seems strange as the presence of dragon-like entities was seen. This story features the Doctor and the excellent Perry with a young H.G. Wells who mobilizes a bunch of monks to fight against the raiders coming from the North Sea. One of the highlights this story does, and including the whole box set, is the companions always have something fun to do. With Perry in this story leading the command of defending the territory from raiders coming in from the North Sea. Perry has the driving force of the story to rally up the village, but even though she has the air of confidence, she is terrified of the situation. It's a nice sight to see with Perry, learning about fear is natural but not letting it consume you. But the thing that I just didn't get with this one is why include HG Wells anyway? He was completely forgettable and I felt didn't really add anything to the story, so it just feels like they just threw in HG Wells just for shits and giggles, really. I do think the drawback of this one is the plot. I just didn't find it too interesting, not very captivating. It's your basic under siege story. And the attack itself feels rather short lived. This one's just okay. Nothing brilliant, but it's nothing bad either. It's just this, this one is just split right down the middle with a 5 out of 10. Uh, my favorite thing was definitely Perry in the story. And that's about it, really. It's just rather average for me. But uh, Chris Chapman definitely does redeem himself in his next story. So it's not downhill for Chris Chapman or anything like that. But yeah, it's just rather average for me. Five out of ten. Sibling Rivalry by Robert Valentine. This sees the Doctor flipping Constance. And the story Children of the Revolution features right after this. Sontarans have invaded this alien world, Geminus while the Quinn brothers are on the hunt for the Sixth Doctor. More Sontaran goodness, I know we've had plenty of Sontaran releases, including their 50th anniversary special series that's been going on. The Doctor and Constance are locked up in a dungeon by the Sontarans. Flip we don't know at the moment, but Constance is playing on the Sontarans' vanity by bringing up the Rutans, which is a funny moment. But Flip is used very well to try and calm down the tensions between the groups on Geminus of a civil war on the planet which only goes into the Sontarans' favour and Flip is put in a difficult position as they cheer Flip to leave which does put a lot of pressure on her considering she just wanted the groups to alley up not to be their leader in this dire situation that the Sontarans are invading their planet. I do think this story is better than the other two so far. Building up a bit more, good inclusion of Sontarans, though it's not doing any anything unique with them because they're not the star of the show. That would be the Quinn brothers, obviously. So they're just there, really, the Sontarans, but it's not like it's for no reason, like H.G. Wells in the second story, which just felt completely just not needed. But so the Sontarans are in this story and the other one, Children of the Revolution. So you're getting a lot of Sontaran goodness here. So yeah, they've been killing it with the Sontaran stuff. And it's been quite a while since I've listened to a story with Constance, but 
yeah i do freaking love constance clark she is lovable and charming just a, a wonderful companion and i really need to get back onto the six doctor constance big finish audios because it's been a while i've clearly forgot and we do get to see some of the brutal sides of the Sontarans when one of their Sontarans have been injured and how they treat it. Even though it looks brutal, to them it isn't. So it's just seeing some rather interesting dimensions of the Sontarans. But yeah, 7 out of 10. It's a, it's a very good story and I like how they use Flip as well. And Constance is just charming as ever. Children of the Revolution. Again, Robert Valentine. This is pretty much a continuation of the previous story. The revolution caused by Flip and her name being chanted doesn't do her any favors as the Sontarans know she caused the revolt and the groups on Geminus to form together. And now the Sontarans know how to cause disruptions within this allyship and that is to go after Flip. That's the answer. This one's a bit of a runaround story. It's, it's like um, Robert Valentine kind of struggled to stretch the story out so this one actually has quite a lot of padding so yeah i'm not too sure about that really because the chris chapman stories are very different from each other and i think robert valentine maybe should have done that as well but again but then again i know why chris chapman did that because he wanted to use an older perry and a younger perry as well so that's the reason why he did it. Yeah, the second part of this Song Taran storyline is not as good as the first part, so I give this one a 6. The Thousand Year 4 by Chris Chapman. This one definitely 100% is the winner for me. See, uh, more actually pretty difficult to say that compared to the last story too, because that one was a lot of fun as well. This one didn't really have a story. It was more just a character piece, and I appreciate it for being... A character piece this one shines so much more than chris chapman's uh, other story in this box set this one is just beautiful piece of writing and it's more of like a love letter and acknowledging some of the controversial things that the six doctors tv run did which was no fault of colin whatsoever that's just a direction thing and how it highlights it, I think it did it perfectly. And yeah, Chris Chapman nailed it in that department. On the frozen planet of Zycross, we know this story is set sometime after Revelation of the Daleks being a younger Perry and before Trial of the Time Lord. The planet Zycross brings many visitors with its famous Thousand Year Four, where its winter lasts 990 years and then the Great War starts and reveals the richest soil that is a heaven for farming. The planet is rich with soil and it can feed whole galaxies and support the end of famine. Quite the resource that could be used in the wrong hands. Even though I think this is such a beautiful character piece, that whole plot line I think could have been really well expanded on into its own unique little story about how stuff like this can be used by the wrong people. But that isn't explored here and I think if it was explored, then this story would have got a 10, but it isn't. It's more of a character piece, but it's still a freaking good character piece. It is a hundred percent, not denying that. But if Chris Chapman did that, then this probably would have been a masterpiece. The story shows the Quinn brothers in a more dangerous light, which I feel was lacking in the previous stories. Everest, who is one of the more impatient and aggressive Quinn brothers, destroys the tractors who are in his way to his target. Feels more concerning for the Doctor. Everest is just more on the dangerous side with all the Quinn brothers. This is such a highlight as the relationship with Perry and the Doctor is just great. Again, referencing to the twin dilemma, for example, and the rather sketchy moments of the TV series that it did for the incarnation. And yet it just works wonders. The story does well to highlight the TV series and the relationship and even the references to the past Fifth Doctor, who Perry says that that person died. Top tier. That is absolute top tier. Because some people are rather against the whole idea of what they did, what Big Finish did rather, with the Fifth Doctor, Perry, with the Fifth Doctor, Perry and Eremon. As it just expanded the story between Planet of Fire and the case of Androzani. So it takes the whole idea that the doctor risked his own life just to save a stranger and now that's kind of been 
retconned if you just you know consider all this canon so it ruins quite a legendary moment that case of androzani is just so famous for and yeah some people are a little bit unsure about that and don't really like it and uh, and yeah thinking it to myself no i don't really like it either it just ruins such a one of the most powerful moments and even though i don't sing the praises of the, of the 80s a lot that's one of the most strongest and impactful moments in the show's history and i'm not surprised it was named the best doctor who story of all time at one point but i'm not going to ruin this character piece of a story here because it's just so wonderful about the doctor asking why is perry still here and stuff and these uh, callbacks of the fifth doctor that's for your ears so i'm not going to leave it there 9 out of 10. It would have been a 10 if they explored the plot a little, a little bit more with the planet, but that there isn't actually a plot. It's a character piece. But amazing character piece. 9 out of 10. The Firstborn. The story that continues where it all began with this box set. The Quinn brothers and their tactics, I feel, are highlighted much more in story 5 and 6. And I feel more invested in their characters. Mel's put back into the story and her and Zeta are planning to support the Doctor, escape their predicament from the Quins and leave. The Quins were successful in capturing the Doctor and there are multiple six Doctors in one room. One awesome scene to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Sixth Doctor which is just absolutely brilliant. Even though the box set, I would say, started off a little bit iffy for me. And then Chris Chapman's second story was a bit, was a bit meh. And some time in the story was a bit shaky in some places as well. Especially the second half having a bit of padding. It felt a little bit too, too drawn out. But stories five and six, 100% uh, bring this box set back. And I think it saved it from having quite of a... I wouldn't say a low rating, but not, not really a high rating either. So, Story 5 and 6 100% redeems the box set for me. And that's just mainly on story itself. Because the charm, the character piece, and the characters themselves, I would say is some of the best. It is absolutely fantastic and a huge, huge love letter to the Sixth Doctor. And how this story closes off and ties everything together... I think it was wonderful and I'm not going to really reveal how it's done because that's for you to find out so I'm not going to do it obviously but it's a 9 out of 10 and again for the first one but I feel the best story in the set was the thousand year four by Chris Chapman with a 9 out of 10 yet he is he has the weakest story and also the strongest story within the box set so he's coming all grounds so I would say first place is the Thousand Year Four. Second place is The Firstborn. Third place is, I would say, Sibling Rivalry. Then The Exaltation. Then Children of the Revolution. And last place being Escape the Holy Island. So, overall, what did I think of this box set? And is it worth your hard earned money to pick this box set up? Uh, I think I'm in the minority of opinions maybe because i did find the first four stories just a little bit iffy for me and i know people i've seen some very good reviews for this box that people are loving it and it's like a love letter for the sixth doctor and i would 100 percent agree with that it is a love letter to the sixth doctor era but stories one to four i just think they're not anything special the special stories are definitely stories five and six most especially being story five the thousand year four that was the winner for me without question and it could actually be made even better and turn out to be a 10 out of 10 but i still sing its praises so much that proves that it's a really good written story character piece rather two nine out of tens two seven out of tens and one six out of ten one five out of ten so i'm going to give this box set a 7.5 out of ten if it wasn't for the 5 out of 10, I would give it an 8, but I'm not, I'm, I don't feel like giving it an 8. I think it's too high. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. So I feel like I'm in the minority with scoring this box set. Because I think the story just has hiccups in places in the earlier four stories. 
my opinion. But as a love letter for the Six Doctor era, 100% brilliant. It's a wonderful celebration for old Sixie.